So we're here today in uh, Worcester, Massachusetts with Morgan from Seven Us. How are you today, man? Great to see you. Excellent. So, uh, guys just released Blackout the Sun. Uh, how's everything going so far? It's good. Um, you know, a lot of touring. This tour has been grueling, but, uh, you know, first one of the album cycle pretty much. So, I'm anxious to be here. You know, we love the Boston area. Aside from all the garb <laughs> that my Yam and Yankee family, I know you. <laughs> so I'll, I'll just get right into it. Uh, what's it like seeing Kevin Euclid in the Yankee uniform? <laughs> Man, you know, I met Kevin Euclid um, when he was, uh, I was in a, I was a groomsman in Johnny Damon's wedding, the, right following the, you know, the first World Series season, and uh, Euclid was there. So I spent the whole week there, and Euclid was there the whole time. And back then he was just, you know, he was a rookie. Right. So uh, he was wild, you know, and a lot of fun. And I, and I liked him a lot. And then for the next few years of torturing my damn team, I didn't talk to him. I hated that dude. That was <laughs> you know? So it's like, it's pretty cool, you know. I, I don't know. I'm sure the Red Sox fans are hating him for it. And, you know, just like with Johnny and, you know. But I, I don't know. Ever since 9-11, I think that the, the rivalry is, is just as strong as ever, but it's not as hated. You know? right. it's, it's more respected, you know. Which is so the way it should be. I uh, I do phone support uh, for a pretty large company, and uh, anytime I talk to somebody, they find out that we're in Boston, they're in New York. I always I always say, but we know how to have fun. Yeah, and that's the way I always put it. Absolutely. At this point, I think we know how to have fun. That's, yeah, that's absolutely. What it's all about. So um, recording this album, uh, how is it? I mean, I know every album has like a different kind of feel to it. How is this, you know, compared to the eight other ones? Yeah, much different. Um, you know, we took the year off, pretty much the whole year off, uh, prior to recording it, and um, the idea was, let's not go in with, what we used to do would be, instead of, you know, we did it a few different ways. Sometimes it would be, John and Clint would go and write riffs, and then we'd go in and we'd rehearse, you know, and write together with those riffs for about a week or so, then we'd take a few weeks off, then we'd, they'd write some more riffs, then we'd go back in and we'd work on those, and. We did that. Sometimes they'd have full songs, you know, minus a few little things. But this time we said, let's do nothing. You know, let's have nothing. The band hasn't been together in, in a year. You know, we need to get together. We need to build back our, you know, the way that we used to do it when we first started, when we all lived down the street from each other and we just go to rehearsal. Okay. And uh, so that was the chemistry that built those songs back then. And that was that was the only conscious effort we made was let's not have any anything done. Let's just go in and write together. So we literally wrote every riff and every vocal part, every lyric, every melody, everything from scratch and did the whole thing in five weeks. And it was crazy. And uh, and it just, what it did was it stopped us from second guessing everything. You know, some, it, Animosity took us a year to do that record. This thing took us five weeks. You know, I mean, Animosity, of course, we were a little bit beat up back then. But, you know, it's just, we would second guess everything over and over. You'd write something and we'd say, that's the best thing we ever wrote. And then within two days, we'd be like, that sucks, I think, you know. <laughs> and it would just be from just getting bored with it, you know. So we've now listened to the record plenty. And uh, I'm sure there's a few things, you know, that we would have changed. But overall, I'm real happy with how it turned out this way. Very cool. So this is the ninth album. Uh, it's got to be kind of crazy to think about. Yeah. So, Salmon's got 13. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, you got to be kidding me, man. Now, um, kind of along that notion, uh, today is actually my 29th time seeing you guys live. Wow. And there's a lot of people I know that have probably seen you guys more than me. What's it like for you to like have fans that you've basically watched grow up? You, every time you go out of, go to their town, you know, you're they're sharing your stories with you and stuff like that. Yeah, man. It's not there's not a fan base for us, you know? It's when you've been around this long and we've interacted with the people so much over the years and there are so many repeat offenders, you know, they come <laughs> all the time. You get to the point where it's, I, I always said, you know, I've beaten this, this whole thing in the ground a little bit, but I mean, still, it's, I have a hard time calling our, the, the support system we have a fan base. You know, it seems demeaning to me for some reason. It seems like you're a fan of me. You know, look at me, you're a fan of, the, you know, it's it's weird. For some reason, it just, there, there's a rock star feel to that word to me. And we don't treat the people that 
that come to see us that you know spend their money to see us um, you know I'm not trying to be overly humble about it but it is humbling when you sit there and I'm looking at my shoes and I'm just like well you know, I bought that with the money that came from these people you know the everything I have in my life is from the people and you know we're not a band that is a monster stature that is always hip to like if you're if you like our band if you've seen us 20 plus times you're a supporter of the band you know and, and it's it's a family thing to us. LeJean harps on it all the time. This is a family reunion. Every time we come to a town, it's like, it's weird. It's like you're playing a party almost. You know, and I'm sitting up there like, hey, dude, what's up? And I've seen you six times this month, you know, and 40 times over the last eight years, you know, and it's just, it's crazy, you know. I mean, we're really blessed, really, really lucky, and it is humbling, you know. It's hard to say social media has changed that. It kind of makes it a little bit easier to kind of interact with everybody, too. <sighs> Yeah. For better or worse. For better or worse. <laughs> I mean, you know, you've got every angle covered on social media. It's like, you know, the people, you get 75 messages on Twitter in 30 minutes and you can't respond to everyone. And every one of those people is equally as important to me, you know, but usually if I have, you know, late night in the bunk, if I've got, you know, just trying to wind down and fall out, I'll go to it. And there could be 300 of them in there. And I'll just scan through and try to see if there's any questions I need to answer. The, you know, the common one of a great show tonight and can't wait to see you next week. And those things, I can't respond to every one of them. So then every once in a while, then you get the guy that sees you responded to a few before him and he's like, oh, so I'm nobody. And you know, <laughs> it's like, oh God. And then you get the guy, you know, on Easter Sunday when I'm going to do an in-store and I comment on my Twitter page that I wish I was with my kids today, but I'm blessed to have what I have. There's nothing whiny about that at all. This dude tweets me back and says, oh, boo-hoo, rough life, huh? And I wanted to kill the dude. He went from being equally as important to me to I don't want you to follow this band anymore. You know, that's not the kind of person that that we like to be in, in, you know, even involved with. So I went off on him a little bit and broke the cardinal rule of getting pulled into the social fight. <laughs> I went so, off. So you talked about taking the year off, and during that time, uh, you and Clint did Call Me No One, mm -hmm. and uh, um, John and Vinny did Projected. Right. Uh, what was the thought behind that, and like, how was that? compared to working with, you know, just South that stuff? Uh, much easier. Um, on, one, on one level, it was much easier. I mean, with Seven Dust, it's a five-man band. There's no question, you know, everything has to go through each guy. And um, and we we do tend to think alike, so it's not like a disaster to go and write together or anything, but me and Clint write a lot alike. And we also like a lot of different styles of music that aren't like Seven Dust at all. And we wanted to push that as a, we wanted to do a record that would be predominantly different. You know, didn't, maybe it would have an element of Seven Dust here or there, but it would be all One Direction. You know, it would be a rock record. It would be leaning a little bit more towards a Foo Fighters thing, I guess, if you had to pick something. But just something with less screams and very little double bass and just kind of rock, you know, which is dark tones and stuff. With Seven Dust, you know, there's a certain amount of stuff that we feel we need to do that the people that support our band want to hear. And with this, it was just easy, the two of us, you know. What about this, of course. What about this note here? Yeah, that's what I was thinking anyway, you know. So it's like, that thing went down like that. What I thought was interesting is how I could pull out, you know, the different parts and the influences that each of you guys brought to Seven Dust, how the parts you could hear, you're like, oh, well, now this song makes sense, I can tell that that's where they contribute, stuff like that. That's, I mean, it's it's tricky because you would think that, you know, by listening to what me and Clint would do and then listening to what John and Vinny did, you would probably, if you were to listen to those records, say, oh, so the melodic side comes from Morgan and Clint and the heavy side comes from Vinny and John. Right. One really, you know, like, till death on the record is, that's me and Clint. You know, that was Clint writing a riff and me sitting on a keyboard writing a drum pattern, you know. And, you know, it's, so it's, it just happened to be, I think, that 
John and Vinny went a little closer to a Seven Dust vibe, and right. we wanted to stay as far away from that as possible. We didn't want to mix those two together. So, uh, but I mean, I love the projected record, you know. Seven Dust fans probably like that record better than us, <laughs> just because it sounds more like Seven Dust. <laughs> I have them both. I like them both equally. Cool. Good answer. Yeah. Playing right down the middle. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you got to, back to sports a little bit, you got to do a song for the hometown team, the right. Falcons. What was, uh, what was that like? How'd that come about? Uh, actually, Etzel from Dope uh, was working with this company that was um, placing songs for, you know, sporting teams and events and stuff like that, and uh, he got a hold of us to do it. The irony to it is, I'm a Buccaneer fan, so <laughs> we hate the Falcons. I don't really hate the Falcons, but uh, those guys love the Falcons. Right. So they were all jacked up to do it, and I was, you know. Then they bring the cheerleaders out there, you know, and I'm like, is this hokey, man? <laughs> you know, because we're, we're a pretty serious band. I mean, we, we cut up probably worse than anybody, but as far as when it comes to the music side, it's pretty serious, you know. I'm like, is this hokey, man? And we were weirded out about it at first. I know that we had a week of getting ready to do it where we were sitting in the bus like, is this <laughs> gonna be weird? And then we realized, we're like, wait a minute, man, let's just back up. Pantera did a song for the Dallas Stars. Nobody calls Pantera hokey, and it never will be hokey, even when they were Pantera with the hair. It still will be hokey, you know, so it's like, we can do this, you know. This is what if somebody would have told me when I was 13 years old, you're going to be in a band that's going to be able to. Right, man. Sorry. That's that's the biggest perk to me as a, as a sports fan, being in this business is you know, I can be on the phone with Bronson Arroyo, and then Johnny could be texting me, you know, I miss you, can't wait to see you, and then, you know, I mean, there's countless of them. I don't want to name drop too much, you know, that's like, but it's, it's crazy, you know, and I mean, I still get a little bit giggly about it, even though I'm, I hang with these dudes, you know, they're my friends, but, uh, you know, I mean, like, David Freeze was in the studio with me and Clint when we did Call Me No One, he was hanging out in there with us, we have a version of him singing Hillbilly, it's nice. atrocious, <laughs> it's awesome, excellent, <laughs> so, uh, too. so you're out on tour now with, uh, Cold Chamber, the Coon Coil, Stolen Babies, how's this going? It's good, you know, very well received, really good bill, uh, sold out or close, or, you know, just about sold out every night. Excellent. So, yeah, it's good. So, uh, yeah, I'm gonna be doing my job in that. Here it comes. <laughs> I'm sure I didn't see this coming. I'm pretty, I'm, I'm impressed that you know everything about me. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I'm, I'm assuming everybody's getting along well? I hate that dude. No, yeah. I'm just kidding. It's, uh, no, it's good. I mean, uh, you know, that was, that's par for the course, you know, I mean, I, I, I was talking to Mikey the other day and I told him, I said, I'm not quite sure what started the whole thing. I don't even remember, you know, I know that, I know I was probably partying a little bit back then. I know that we were a lot younger. I know that my wife was in their band and then she wasn't in their band. And then there was some drama that was going on outside of our camps, just from people that were, the social media thing started to kick in about then, you know, with the MySpace. And then it became, you know, I pulled her out of the band and stuff like that. And then it is just a bunch of, a, 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 a bunch of drama going on away from us and somehow or another something was said and it was off the record and it went on the record and once it went on the record then it got to him and then he did what he should do which is you know respond and then I said well, wait a minute and then it became some big shit show and so that went on for a few years and then uh, we played, uh, we were in Australia a few years ago, and Devil Driver was over there. And we hadn't had, I mean, there had actually been some, like, talks between people. I was like, no, I'm cool with that guy, man. You know, I'm not even married to that girl anymore, you know? And, and I don't even remember what it was about. I just know that, you know, it was probably my fault, for all I know. I know that the, the, the comment that was not supposed to be public went public, and it was from me. So it, it started with me. And uh, I was like, you know, I, I I never had a problem with that guy, you know, maybe we should just squash this. And then we saw each other in Australia and we were inseparable. Like me and him hung out every day over there and his family was over there and I love his wife and his kids and we just, we had a really good time catching up about all this stuff that we didn't talk about for years. 
And uh, he brought it up. He said, man, I'm thinking I might do Coal Chamber again. And if I do it, what do you think? And I said, we got to do it together. You know, I mean, that would be hilarious. Yeah. And sure enough, I mean, we were all, we were, me and him weren't saying it, but all the other people in both yeah. bands were like, man, we should, we should milk this thing, man. <laughs> we should make people think that this thing could end any day, you know? Because the people, they all think, you know, that me and him have this problem with each other when really I went to lunch with him the other day, you know? I mean, it's, we hang out. Excellent. Well, glad it worked out that way. Yeah. So, uh, what's, what's next? What do you guys have after this? Uh, this goes on for about another three weeks. This is, uh, like I said to start, it's been the most grueling tour we've done since our first record. I mean, we did five in a row, travel day, five in a row, travel day, three in a row, day off, five in a row. I mean, which a lot of people are like, that's not the craziest thing in the world, but to us, when you're not 20 anymore, it's like, oh man, you know, my back is broken, and my neck is killing me, and <laughs> we're, you know, burning it both both yeah, legs on both hot. sides are getting excess. I'm getting there with you. It's crazy, man. So we'll be excited about getting this thing done. And we got about three weeks left. We'll take a month off, month and a half off. Then uh, we're gonna go out do some shows, bring otherwise out with us, and um, do that for a little while. And then I'll know probably tomorrow whether we're gonna do a summer festival run or whether we're gonna look at Europe, Australia, or South America or something. Cool. So, um, second to last question, uh, unfortunately uh, we, we learned that Chief from the Def Deftones passed away the other day and I know that you know, Chino has done a song with you guys before so obviously I'm assuming you guys know each other pretty yes. well. Do you have any you know, cool stories to share about Chi? Oh man, I mean that whole camp, you know, we came, they, they came up about a year before us, you know, we really almost came out at the same time. and. Uh, you know, we've always loved those guys, and we're not in a minority. They were they were a band's band, and, and the people's band, I mean. And she was wonderful, and the sweetest, probably the sweetest of everybody in that band, and I love them all. And uh, so it's been a long run, you know, for us waiting to see what was gonna happen, and always being cautiously optimistic. And uh, so it's, it's, it's like, this has been a really, really weird week, you know, the yeah. last few days have just been really down. And uh, so we're, we're dedicating everything for the rest of this run, you know, to him and uh, to the, you know, the Deftone family and all the people that know him. Cool. So, uh, Black Out the Sun, it's in stores now. Uh, do you have anything else you want to add? Yeah, man. I'm impressed. <laughs> thank you, man. All right, I, thank I you. Enjoyed it. I love when I start talking sports, you know. <laughs>